Hey y'all, Dr. Brown back again with another exciting histology video, and this time uh, it's even less exciting than normal because we're going to be talking about blood plasma. And from a histological perspective, plasma is not that, all that exciting. There's really not much to look at there. However, uh, since it does make up the majority by volume of uh, your blood tissue, I think we would be remiss if we didn't at least learn a little bit about what's in plasma and um, you know what those components do. So plasma is mostly water. It comes as no surprise. It's a liquid tissue, and uh, water is the universal solvent in our body. So water is going to make up about 90% of the volume of plasma. Of that remaining 10%, most of it, 7 of the 10%, are uh, comprised of proteins. And that's what we're going to spend most of our time talking about in this little video, are the proteins that we find in plasma. Um, the miscellaneous category includes things like lipoproteins and hormones and wastes and things like that, so we'll get to that at the very end. Um, and then electrolytes are going to constitute somewhere around 1% or often a little less than 1% of our total plasma content. Now, the proteins, that orange bar, is kind of expanded in the pie graph on the right. So everything that you see in the pie graph on the right fits inside the orange part of the pie graph on the left. And you can see that there are quite a few different proteins present in various abundance in the plasma. And what we're going to do is talk about them as three kind of groups of proteins. The first one being albumin. So if you think back to that graph, shoot, let's just go back to it. The largest component of the plasma proteins, as you can see in kind of the light brown, that makes up over half of that bar graph, is albumin. And albumin is a super important protein in the plasma because it's responsible for helping maintain the osmotic pressure of your blood. As blood flows through a capillary bed, uh, a lot of the water is going to kind of leak out uh, in, a, uh, in a process called bulk flow. So, and it has to do with hydrodynamics and things that really are, are the domain of a physiology class, not a histology class. But albumin, by being dissolved in the blood, it's a solute, and as a solute then, it can draw water in via osmosis. So maintaining plasma osmotic pressure is one of the most important components or things that albumin does. The other thing it does is it carries around lipids. So you can see inside the uh, ribbon diagram of this protein, the little green ball and stick things, those are lipids. They're fitting down into little hydrophobic pockets inside the albumin protein itself. And this way, these hydrophobic things can travel throughout the aqueous solution that is plasma. So albumin, the biggest bulk of the plasma proteins, um, one of the most important, especially for its role in maintaining plasma osmotic pressure. The second kind of protein that you find in the plasma is a large family of proteins called the globulins. And the globulins can be broken down uh, into three different subfamilies. The first being the alpha globulins. And these are largely inhibitor proteins, things like antitrypsin. There are also uh, some alpha globulins that are going to act as carriers, much like we saw with albumin carrying lipids. Uh, there are alpha globulins that are going to help transport other molecules through the blood. The beta globulins are a large family of globulin proteins that carry out various functions. Some examples include a plasminogen, which is an enzyme that breaks up blood clots, uh, a protein called sex hormone binding globulin, and that's actually going to transport uh, estrogens, progestin, testosterone. Uh, the sex hormones that come from the gonads, the primary sexual organs, are hydrophobic, so they need a protein to carry them through the aqueous medium of the blood. Uh, one more example of a beta globulin would be transferrin, which is the protein that carries your iron around in your blood for you. So lots of different beta globulins doing lots of different jobs. And then finally, we have the gamma globulins, and these are your antibodies. So these are those immune proteins that help tag uh, invaders and help your immune system get rid of things that don't belong. And if you take an immunology class, you're going to learn more than you ever wanted to know about the gamma globulins. The final group of proteins, so we've had albumins and globulins, the last group of proteins that we find in blood plasma are clotting factors. And these include things like prothrombin, which is a regulatory protein that is uh, going to be converted into the protein thrombin, which is going to convert the soluble fibrinogen 
into the insoluble fibrin, which is what you actually see in this scanning electron micrograph. So fibrin is an insoluble protein that's going to form this mesh or network that traps the blood cells. That's what you're looking at in this picture. And that fibrin is made from the soluble fibrinogen. And it's made by a regulatory molecule called thrombin, which is made from prothrombin. So prothrombin and fibrinogen uh, are going to be dissolved in the plasma at all times so that if there's a break in a blood vessel wall, then a clot can form and prevent you from losing too much blood. So we got lots of different proteins in the blood, but the vast majority as far as the bulk of protein content is going to be albumin. You can see the second most abundant are actually your, your gamma globulin, so Ig, Ig stands for immunoglobulin. Those are your antibodies, so you can see IgG, IgA, and IgM uh, constitute kind of the second most abundant pool of proteins. And then you have your alpha globulin, so you see like alpha-2 macroglobulin, alpha-1 antitrypsin, alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, etc. Uh, transferrin, we already mentioned, is a beta globulin. So lots of proteins in there, and they're doing a lot of important jobs. So before we finish out the video, let's look at the last 3% of blood plasma. 1% or less of that total plasma volume is comprised of electrolytes. Electrolytes are just anything that ionizes when you put them in water, and these are going to be very important for our overall physiology. Sodium, potassium, calcium, um, magnesium, all of these ions that enable things like, you know, I mean, not really important things, just like, you know, brain cell function and muscle contraction, but you get the idea, right? So these are important, even though they're a very small component of plasma overall, just because they're present in small amounts doesn't mean they're not important. And then finally, that kind of miscellaneous category, that 2% of stuff that doesn't fall into the class of water, protein, or electrolyte, that's going to include things like your lipoproteins, which we learned about in our module on adipose tissue. So remember, very low density lipoproteins and chylomicrons. Those, that's how we're going to transport dietary fats in our blood. Uh, waste products, right? Your blood, it serves to um, transport. That is its job, right? It's a transporting tissue. So wastes that are generated in your peripheral tissues, like urea that we see here, um, it can also include things like uric acid, creatinine, but any kind of non-protein nitrogenous substance, meaning something that has nitrogen in it and isn't a protein, uh, that's generally a waste product that the blood is transporting to the kidneys for eventual excretion in the urine. We talked about the sex hormone binding globulin carrying things like testosterone and estrogen through the bloodstream, but there are also numerous hydrophilic hormones that can just be dissolved in the plasma, like our friend growth hormone here. So you're going to have hormones dissolved in there. They're not going to constitute a very large proportion individually, but collectively they are an important component. And then finally, you're going to have blood gases. So most of your oxygen and carbon dioxide are going to be bound to a protein inside your red blood cells, but because you're breathing air, and air contains nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, those gases will dissolve into the aqueous environment of your plasma. So because you're breathing air that contains nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, you're going to have nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide dissolved in your blood plasma. So I know this isn't very long. Uh, we don't want it to be long. Just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what is making up the bulk of this, t this component that makes up the bulk of blood tissue. So that's it for now. Study hard. We'll see you later.